Sorry, we're a couple minutes late. We had some technical difficulties, but we're all here. For those of you who are with us, welcome. We're glad to see you here. Um, we're going to spend a little time with the Donna's words, the Donna Brave Bull Howard from up at Standing Rock today. I see some other people showing up. Hi, I can't hear anything. Hmm. Check your check your um, your own settings there, Kirsty. See what happens. Um, so we got somebody who can't hear anything, Tanya. Oh well, we'll keep going. This will be taped and it is being streamed. Um, I was just a couple minutes ago chatting with Ladonna, and she does not feel um, well enough to be here today, unfortunately. But she will be watching this. I will send her a copy of it. And we told her um, she was going to be here with us. So all of us here today, all of us who are listening in here, all of us who are sending love and light, um, keep Ladonna in your heart while we do this. Those who know her, those who do not, we probably all know her, at least from Standing Rock. Let's just hold her as we do this um, time together today, this sharing today. I'm seeing this as an honoring of not only LaDonna, but Standing Rock and everything that's happened forward from that, as I believe that's what she would want too. So that's how we're going to go into this energy. Sue, I think, is going to open us. Yes, with song, or should I open with a short prayer? Which way do you want? Prayer okay, song. I'll open with just a short prayer bringing in the directions. Unless someone else wants to do it. If you do, hand up. You're welcome to do it. Okay, I'll open the four directions just briefly. And then Sue's going to sing a couple of the songs that she sang when we were up at Standing Rock. Um, we went up a hill, one of the hills behind where we were camping. And we sang some songs and we did some taping. And then we also did some over by Not Afraid to Look, the um, statue looking over the river there. So here we go. Start out, everybody, relax. Try to shut this down. Let's get out of our heads and into our hearts. This is definitely a hard piece today. Uh, breathe into this. I'm gonna burn a little sage for all of us. crazy times. Let's let's make them nice and slow here today. Let's just enjoy this time together. Good. Good. Feel the engine slowing down, even my own. Welcome to Tecumseh. God. Allah. Universe, whatever name you use. We are a circle here today to honor the people of Standing Rock, especially LaDonna Howard, our sister, who was up there and helped create Standing Rock. But it's to honor all the water protectors everywhere, as we know LaDonna would want. All of those whose efforts grew out of Standing Rock, all of those who grew with Standing Rock, we are here today. We welcome in the ancestors of all four directions, the east, the south, the west, and the north, to be with us today. All the colors of the medicine wheel. To help us call in this energy, healing energy for our planet, healing energy for the waters, Healing energies for each of us so we can continue to create in a good way. So we can begin to move out of the chaos of what we've been in and start to move into the time of growing, planning, healing. The prophecies have talked about. The Donna has been a great guide in this and we give her thanks here in the opening prayer. So have all the others including her husband, Miles. All those who have gone before us, all those still here with us, we're all in the same circle. 
So those in the East, we ask you to come and help us build in a new way. Those in the South, we ask you to use your strong bodies to actually do the building. Those in the West, share your teachings, be the teachers. And those in the North, guide us. So as we enter this dark time, we can now enter a time of light and peace. All these things we pray, all these things we ask for, we do not for ourselves, but so we can help to heal the sacred hoop wherever it is broken and whenever it is broken. Om Matakriyase, all my relations. Songs from Standing Rock. We are. Spirit lives mm. in everything, guides us daily with our dreams, shows us what we need to see, helps us through eternity. We'll do that now or save that one for you. We're going to save the grandmother's song for the end. Thanks, Sue. Beautiful, always. So, as you were listening to those songs, I wonder if you could see yourself up on, up above camp, up above uh, Sacred Stone Camp, which was LaDonna's camp, standing, pardon me, standing next to, not afraid to look, the big statue there. Let me just share a few words and jump in if you want on Sacred Stone Camp, why we were there, how we came there. It's why we know LaDonna. When Standing Rock started, it, it, I became aware of it quickly. Some friends in uh, Pine Ridge told me what was happening. Matter of fact, some people in Pine Ridge just joined us. They're listening on the phone. Um, told me what was happening and asked me if I would help. Uh, virtually online. I really didn't know how to do that at that point. 
I said no a couple of times, to be honest. But then I guess a couple elders from up at Standing Rock also approached me. So I said, okay, I'll try to do what I can because no one was covering um, Standing Rock. And those that were, were, um, what's the word we like to use now? Misinformation, fake news, it was all lies. And so I decided, okay, let's do that. Let's see what we can do to cover it as best we can. People started sending me material from up there. I, I knew we had to get up there to meet with the principals. I had heard, I'd been told at that point, that a group of young people had gone to LaDonna Howard and asked her to get involved, asked her to help stop the pipeline, stop the black snake that was coming through. And she agreed. And she agreed that using sacred stone as one of the camps would happen. This was a piece of land that is, I understand it anyways, partly her land and partly um, the community's land. That's how it usually works anyway on the reservation. So we started putting information up. A lot of people started joining our Facebook group. And I asked some friends and people I knew to, well, basically I said, help, because so many things were coming, we were getting flooded. Uh, we were quickly up to about a dozen admins, maybe more. And we were pretty much online 24 seven. We spread it around the globe so that somebody was awake all the time. So I started reaching out up to Standing Rock and was told that we could come up and visit. So Sue and I got in a, an old used RV we had and started heading up to Standing Rock. Not really knowing what we were gonna find, but knowing I had to connect with LaDonna. I had chatted a little bit online with her, but needless to say, she was a lot busier than having to worry about dealing with me or anybody else on the ground. We got up there. Uh, it was interesting getting into camp. Uh, we went through the roadblocks on the way with the police leaning into the RV with their rifles inside the cab, wanting to know where we were going, taking pictures of our license plates, uh, which many of you experienced who will hear this later, I know, probably a lot more than we did. We got into camp and we found a place where we would be. We saw how diverse it was, which was awesome. Uh, we saw people, all four colors were there for sure. Uh, just a lot of people all over, a lot of young people. And once we found a place where we could be, we started walking around Sacred Stones. Sacred Stones was the smaller camp. The large camp was on the other side of the river. We could see it. Uh, we hadn't gone over there yet. And so we tracked down uh, LaDonna. Somebody guided us to her, actually. And we sat with LaDonna and Miles, her husband, who has since passed on. He now works with us from the spirit side. And we just shared back and forth with her. Um, her main directions to me were to do whatever it takes. Just get this covered. Help us get word out. Help us connect around the world. And I took all that very seriously um, and took it back, and that's what we tried to do. So that's the, the basis of this. Um, from there, it just grew and grew and grew. We had a couple hundred thousand people in the group quickly from all four corners, and we had groups like Standing Rock begin to sprout everywhere. This is what is now... Um, triggering everything around the globe as far as water, in my opinion. Uh, we've always had the water elements, but this started it anew. And so for that, we thank LaDonna, we thank those young people, certainly thank all the young people now who are standing up. And we thought we would just have this moment to recognize LaDonna, Standing Rock again, and bring this energy back into the discussions. This week is all about the World Water Law and 2021 the World Water Year. I keep tripping over those titles. Um, what a great way and a great time to recognize Standing Rock, LaDonna, and all the others involved, all the others. They're on the ground virtually, it doesn't matter. This was an effort that took everybody. We had to stand up to the um, attacks by people inside and out, everybody did. And that's okay. We stood together. We united like we have to do now. And so I think that's enough for the beginning, huh? Probably more than enough, but I'm always too wordy. 
I think what we'd like to do now is when I asked LaDonna uh, if, the, if she wanted to consider coming on, she's quite ill, I'm sure all of you know that. Um, and I didn't expect her to be able to, but I wanted to make sure once again, we gave her that opportunity. She was not able to, but she recorded um, this first man video. And I think it went up just a couple of days ago. And then she sent me the link and she said, here, please use this. And as I say, I was just chatting with her just before the program. And we have her blessing once again, and we will be sending her, uh, of course, a copy of this. So I'm going to turn this over to Tanya, who is the real brains electronically here. And we will watch um, Adana's story. Pay attention to how she's telling the old story here, uh, a creation story, I believe. But look how it is relating to the current times. Tanya, it's all you. Her good earth woman, enrolled member of Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. I live in 48th, North Dakota. I'm from the Cannonball River. And I want to tell you a little story. In our way, in our life, when the winter comes, when the winter solstice settles, we tell story. It is time to spread story. Story is everything about who we are as a culture, a people, a way of life. It gives us identity and connection. Story controls our lives. So we must tell story to teach our young as they grow. We must tell story so that we do not repeat the past. We must tell story so that we can go into a better future. So today I'm going to tell you the story of my relative, because I am related to everyone. My relative, his name is Tatanka. Can you feel it? Tatanka. There is power in there, the buffalo, our brother. Ihani, a long time ago, when the world was different, Kashla had come down to tell us that he was going to cover the world with water, and that we would go down into the caves, and we would stay there until the water subsided. So we listened to him. We went down into the caves at a place called Cave. And we went underground and we lived underground into the cave, the great cavern, and the Paha Sapa. As we lived there, our villages, our homes, our families, we always have that one. That one that might bring a little voice of association, a little objection, a little of something. Well, so for, in some cases, we tend to call this person Iktomi. Iktomi represents the spider, the trickster. Sometimes he's right, sometimes he's wrong. So Iktomi. Iktomi knows to be very, very tiny, but very, very powerful in his mind. So Iktomi is walking through the cave with Tokahe, the first man. And he says to Tokahe, I know something you don't. Tokahe says, Hey? 
I know. I know that there's a great world above us. I heard that in this great world, there is all this food and these trees and vegetables and animals. And it is so beautiful. Ah, uh, me, we know you lie all the time. I'm not listening to you. No, I, 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 I'm telling the truth this time, honest. No, Ekdomi, you lied to me too many times. You remember that time? No, I missed you. Next day, here comes Tokahe coming down the hall. Comes Ekdomi, jump on his shoulder. Remember what I said yesterday, Tokahe? Beautiful world out there. Just think if we took our people out there, they could eat. Oh, we could eat so much. Can you taste the berries? I can taste them now. Okay, hey, he's looking at him, you know, well, maybe, maybe he is telling the truth. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to call a whole council. We'll see what everybody says. So, Tokahe called the whole council to come in. And he got up there and he started pacing back and forth and he was saying, um, I was supposed to bring you this message from Iktomi. What? You're making us all come here to sit because Iktomi? You know Iktomi lies. No, no, Iktomi. Iktomi don't always lie. Iktomi always lies. No, no. He might be telling the truth. We should listen to him. Okay. So Iktomi got up. He had the floor. He was telling him all the big stories about all the vegetables and the trees and the animals everything that was growing above the ground and how beautiful it was. And Grandma over there said, I wonder if he's telling the truth. He might be this time. <gasps> Maybe we should have gave him a chance. Oh, we should go see. You know, is it detrimental to ourselves if we don't go see? How will we know? So the village is all stirring and all the gossip is going and everybody is talking and Ikdomi is sitting there giggling because he's just so happy he's got a little bit of trouble and Tokahe is pacing back and forth because now he has to find out what they're going to do and everybody's getting after him. Next morning in the meeting the people said we will follow Ikdomi out of the cave. The medicine man, Tatanka, he heard that. He put his head down and he shook his head. He thought, oh, oh, this is not good. But in the village, the village was all excited. Everybody was packing and getting the kids ready and getting grandmas all packed up and gathering all of their belongings because they'd been underground for such a long time. And finally the day arrived. So here they come, get ready for the procession. And there's Ikdomi in the front, prancing around. And then there's Tokahe and all the following leaders from there. As they start the march, Tatanka comes out in front of the people and says, stop. He said, if you go outside the cave, you cannot come back. I cannot protect you. Please don't go. But people had already made up their mind they were going. So Tatanka went to the entrance of the cave. And he said, Tukashla, grandfather, I don't know what to do. Grandfather, for my people, I come here. I come here and I lay myself down, grandfather. I give myself so my people can live. Grandfather, please let my people live. And at that, Tatanka stepped over that boundary 
and he changed into this big woolly creature and he laid down before the people and said eat me so that we could live that is how we are related to the buffalo that is how we are one and this that is how we are the guardians of the mother earth hit you to a law that is all i'm going to say One of the pages of the seven days of rest, if you haven't been to the um, website to look at it, please go check it out. There's tons of great um, offerings all week long, not just ours, although ours are really good. But now there's there's a lot of incredible offerings there. And there's also an honoring page for. Okay. There's an honoring page for, let me try this. Well, at least I got that going. There we go. I exited full screen and it seemed to work. There's an honoring page there as well for um, Standing Rock. That was done by our, whoops, by one of our friends. There we go. I think we got it. So, whoa. That was not afraid to look, the statue there, looking over to Cannonball River. Anyone who was at Standing Rock knows that statue well. I don't care which camp you were in. <clears throat> Somebody now understands, I guess it's our folks, my video. Okay, good. So um, I'm gonna open it up. Couple people it seems couldn't hear. I don't know why, I'm not sure why. The, it, it must be, you know, we're having trouble with computers these days. So I hope you were able to hear it as best you can. Does anyone have comments, questions, things they'd like us to talk about or they'd like to talk about? Maya. You know, it was very powerful listening to her tell that sort of beginnings, the story of beginnings of the Lakota people while we we're watching the images of Standing Rock. And I was, I was feeling myself, you know, balancing those and, and going back and forth between them. And I was, you know, wondering about the, the meaning of, uh, there are many cultures that have these stories of surviving floods or surviving the end of the world in some way by, and I know the Hopi have following the ants down underground and, um, and being safe embedded within the earth. And so I'm wondering, as I listen to the story, is it about, you know, a time of separating from the earth in some way to step into this other realm that has these different trials and tribulations. And, you know, here, there are these images of the Lakota people along with all the allies being challenged and, uh, and having these tribulations and challenge in like this imperfect world here, you know? <laughs> I imagine maybe that cave is this place of spirit or just being held in safety. And then, and, but we all live in this other world now where, where we have these challenges and uh, we have to stand up for our truth. Uh, against those that are even more separated. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm just, I'm wondering what other people were feeling and sensing from this um, beautiful, I don't call it creation myth, but beginning, beginning story of beginnings. And then um, thinking we're in another time of endings and beginnings right now and wondering, you know, what the next world is. I mean, I know what we want to call in, so that's just, just some of my thoughts. I would love to hear others. My thoughts and my wonderings. <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautiful to hear her voice. Um, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a special thing about voices. I, I so feel the energy of a person from their voice. Mm -hmm. And I was 
feeling her and her courage and her leadership. Um, to me, what happened at Standing Rock represented a, a return of the feminine way of standing in resistance, not fighting and not turning to violence, but standing your ground. I, to me, that feels like a feminine way of negotiating when there is conflict. And I know, I know that the women folk had a strong uh, presence and of recommending mm -hmm. to, to all that they stay in nonviolence and stay in that place. And it, it touched me a lot. And I've spoken a lot to activist groups I'm working with about mo that modeling that we had of standing strong, standing connected to the earth as a way of um, a, a way of resistance rather than anything and then fighting in any way. So that's a part of what it has meant to me. Yeah, that, and that, I would have been there except that uh, just finishing, I would have been there with you all, but I, I just finished having surgery at that time. So I was supporting from where I live the best I could and uh, knew it was a groundbreaking uh, turning point um, for all of us. Yeah, so, that, um, thank you. Thank you, that, that peaceful part, which of course is something that's been modeled many times. I first experienced it with um, Dr. King way back when I was a puppy. Um, and that was one of the biggest things from LaDonna. I think she must have said it three or four times that to cover things peacefully, not to, not to cover certain groups like Anonymous was one she specifically said, please don't put them up on the site because they are too often fostering non-peaceful ways. And so the entire time, right to today, the group still runs. Um, we still honor that. There's certain groups we don't cover. There's certain things we don't put up because that is not the way to move ahead with this. I, I do like, you know, creation story. This is, and then the way she weaved in all the shots of Standing Rock. Um, depending on what culture, and this is the fifth, fifth or sixth earth we're entering. So it is another creation time, in my opinion. And it doesn't matter if it's the first creation time or the new one. So yeah, it's... Um, and the underground piece is absolutely in a lot of different cultures around the globe, not just here in the Americas. So yeah, I, I honor this as a creation story, but also a creation story for today. And yes, hearing her voice was um, was amazing. LaDonna, we wish you were here with us, but you were here with us, as I said when we chatted before this came on. So you're here, you're just not able to have a seat at the moment. What I enjoyed so much about hearing her voice was traveling back on her voice because she was so connected to the beginning, which makes her a great storyteller, I think. The, um, the foundation that her voice even cracked, which I totally recognize um, as really feeling connected to the earth and to the beginning to the story. Yeah, great points, you're right. Um, I got a lot out of her voice too, and yes, it did crack. She was, a, she is a very strong, uh, emotional um, woman who knows what has to happen and guides things that way. And, um, and working with her husband at that time, Miles, he was an amazing support, as she has said many times. So they had a, they had a great uh, male female energy thing going on, and whoever needed to speak did. So that we could see immediately when we met them. And I hope we carried that into some of our online work. But you know, I listened to Maya about not being there. It doesn't matter if you were there or not. Um, it's great to have been there and to have felt that energy. But everybody did their part for this. Some were able to go, some were not. Uh, we had people that came from halfway around the world to be there, which I totally respect. Others couldn't do it. And that's why we wanted to make sure that at least virtually the opportunity was there, which we're back to once again, thanks to the um, COVID situation, we're back in the virtual. Well, we are the media once again, and that's not bad. We'll just keep carrying it forward. 
I'm kind of curious if he wishes to speak. Our, our brother Darwin is here from Africa. I'm just curious what this said to somebody from another country. Darwin, do you even have the ability? I know his connecting sometimes from Africa is not easy either. You want to comment on that, Darwin? Maybe not. For him to come on is often difficult. Okay. We'll, um, maybe we'll hear from Darwin later. He's going to be joining some of our, he's going to join another circle later in the week, I believe. Might be the spiritual circle. So maybe we'll ask him again. Anybody else? Sue, what do you think? What are we missing? No, I think the, in these times with this virtual connection that we have now, um, we're all connecting energetically um, through seeing each other, but you can also connect energetically just so you can feel the energy as we speak to each other and see each other. And I think that's mm -hmm. amazing in itself. And um, it's just, um, it's helping us to, um, to connect in another way, in a way, so that when we don't have this virtual world, if that ever happens, um, mm -hmm. we'll be able to connect through spirit, through our energy, like our ancestors did. <laughs> be able to, to just know what to do and when to do it and where to go and how to be and just connect that way. And also, I think we need to remember that we're really not alone. We're not, we're not just us sitting here. We've got so many helpers and so many, um, so much support and we're also, that we can see sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah. Not when our focus is here. <clears throat> well, I think Sue's piece is really um, an important one. It, it, this is circle moving around again. And I think about this one often. When I started on this road, uh, we didn't have any of this virtual connection stuff. So I spent years and years, decades, traveling around, living with different cultures, learning from different elders, acquiring my knowledge that way. And that is um, the best way to do it, in my opinion. It's, you, you can't even explain it unless you've done it. The virtual realm, however, is good. You know, we can sit and then we do. We're global here. Last night we had a program that was really global. Um, and that's nice, but if things crash again, and they may well, will we have that ability that people did have? And I've heard that from so many of my elders that they had the ability. The um, shamans of, of the time, and there weren't that many, could connect around the globe and then share the information with everyone else. And that's why you see so many pyramids that are very similar anywhere in the world and on and on and on. And I think we are rebuilding some of those skills. I really do. I don't think I'll be here to see it. God, I hope not, because I'll be 200 years old. But I think the younger people are starting to, to get it. When I'm in the groups with them and I hear them start to talk to each other, it's like they've already talked in their minds before they've come on to talk there. I mean, you can just feel it. It's like, well, wait a minute, you guys already talked about that. Uh, and they hadn't, but they had. And so, yeah, I hope that keeps coming forward. And I, I've been tuning in lately. I've, I've, I understand from being uh, a part of the new unified physics community, um, unified field understanding. They, they talk about non-local communication and that's what we're saying. Wherever you are, w there's a way to tune in or we say people are psychic or whatever. But I'm, I've been starting to realize water, which we're all here for today and, and, and this week and honoring water that water may be what I call the organic internet, that because water exists everywhere and we are water, there's water in the air, you know, water in space, that it's sort of the material level of the 
non-material unified field of energy uh, that connects everything and that maybe it is through our water that we're able to listen and hear each other at a distance and to speak with the plants and the animals and, and listen to them. So it's a new understanding for me to think about it as water. And so I, I talk to water, I ask water to help me develop this ability to listen and transmit my thoughts, my, my heart, my communications with the others. And uh, it delights, delights me to think of that, and that water's uniting us in that way. And it is, it is a, the representative on the earth of the field of all connection and of all wisdom, all stored up information. So there's something exciting about that to me. Yeah. I wonder about Molly. Um, who would like to share? Yeah, she, she'd added some things to the chat earlier. Would you like to come on, Molly? Would love to hear from you. She's too shy. That's okay. You don't have to be shy. <laughs> and we, we see you sharing then on the chat, and we appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. Yeah, she ah, okay. And you don't even have two heads. What are you shy about? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thanks for bringing your energy. Um, thank you. Thank you for this. And thank you for sharing this space. Um, we are really, I, I'm not on a Facebook, so I logged into the Zoom. I've never been on a Facebook in my life. So uh, that's why I'm in, in here sharing this space with you. Uh, honoring the water, really. Um, on the last uh, day of the year, I finished reading Dr. Um, Emoto Musaro's book. And um, I had a dream about crystals everywhere. And I woke up to London being covered with, with ice crystals everywhere. Um, so I took this as a strong message that I need to join this um, water, seven days of rest and the water um, space that you're sharing and hope to share prayers and from this corner of where we are. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Excellent. Where are you? Where are you? We are based in London. Ah, cheers then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, I have um, about seven, I have a seven uh, on my little temple, I have a seven different waters for different parts of the world that I brought or I keep and I have some water from um, Glastonbury tour and I have a water from um, uh, English Channel. I have a water from River Thames. I have a Adriatic Sea water uh, and I have um, water from India, Arabic Sea and I have a rain water from London. Wow, nice. So I'm holding that on, on, on a space here while we are going through these seven days uh, of rest. Thank you. Yeah, I hope we see you again. Thank we, you. Uh, Welcome and everything, of course. I have, I have also a water, special water here. Some of this water comes from Sedona, some of it from um, Mount Shasta that I, uh, I have a crystal in it and I keep it with me through every program this whole week and to receive all the blessings and all the wisdom and the sharing and then I'm going to offer it to the ocean at the end of the week. So thank you for holding the water and your, your altar. And you know, Molly, when you spoke of your dream of the crystals everywhere, that's what I was thinking. The water is everywhere and when it's in its pure form, it's a crystalline, liquid crystalline structure. And that's the same as what computers use, right? So that it makes sense that it's this vehicle for this um, other kind of communication, what we call psychic, but 
you know, it's, it's a potential for all of us to communicate through the crystalline water matrix. So oh, thank you for circle, sharing that dream. Yeah, can I circle it back to Standing Rock a minute? Molly, were you aware of Standing Rock while it was going on? Um, so I would like to, to introduce you to my husband, Gabriele, who has actually been following for many years um, through the Standing Rock. Um, so yeah, do you wanna say something? Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Gabri. Uh, yeah, I love you um, and what you're doing. Standing Rock has been very special, you know, I, I've followed, I have been followed, um, uh, it's funny uh, to talk about this now. Um, yeah, I, since I was very little, um, uh, when I discovered Black Elk, um, oh. I ended up going back into the spiritual spirituality with Crazy Horse and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, one of my best guru, let's say, it was John Trudell for many years, you know, I have a very special connection. I'm a musician too, uh, he's a poet, I'm also a bit of a poet, a musician, and so I do music with the plants and uh, I, I'm connected with this water. It's very special because through them we have a collective and through the um, through the periods of the Stanley Rock resistance, I've been following and, and spread the words and try to share it with every things we could because I feel very connected to the people of that particular part of the history of uh, that really for me is very special. So when Mari told me tonight, tonight that we, Mari was telling me this, uh, the, so I, I was very curious to listen. Uh, participating with you guys and it is very special uh, and, that um, and I, I'm really grateful that to be participating with you. Thank you. <laughs> We're glad you made it. We've got a um, wisdom circle on later tonight at seven o'clock our time. Um, Chief uh, Two Dog is part of that. He also knew Trant John Trudeau for years. So when you brought his name up, it's interesting how these connections keep coming in. Yeah, he's he's a very special part of my of my mm. in, in, and um, whatever is happening for about regarding power and regarding the real source of power and uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the moment with the shifting of we can really feel that even so we are all isolated we are all connected somehow you know <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you both for sharing. We really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> what another part of the world in. Uh, yeah. yeah we're getting late, but we usually do. That's okay. Right here. It's very close and everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we move and finish out or somebody, anything, anything else we need to bring up before we finish? Anyone? Okay, let's let's finish with Sue is going to finish with the grandmother song, which again she sang at Standing Rock up next to that statue you saw earlier. So if you want, close your eyes and just go back to Standing Rock with her as she sings it. I hear the voice of my grandmother calling me. I hear the voice of my grandmother call. She says, wake up, wake up, children, wake up, wake up, listen, listen. May the rivers all run wild. May the mountains go on spoiled. May the air be clean. May the trees grow tall. Thank you. 
So we will take the recording. This will be posted, but I told Madonna I would also send it to her. So we will send it to her. So we just want to, all of us, I think here, thank Madonna for all she's done and all she is. <clears throat> Not too many people can say I've made a difference in a big way. And I think she's one of those. And so we thank her for that. And we continue to let the waters flow. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you.